struggle to stay alive and you know that the countries that we're coming from are supporting this. And yet to see the reception and the warmth and the love that we were received with was really beyond any of our comprehension. And Palestinians were jumping up and down and, and cheering, you know, we broke the siege, we broke the siege. And we knew that we had, we had broke the siege. I mean, we were ecstatic, we were happy. But we knew that we hadn't broken the siege. If we really were going to do this, then we would have to leave Gaza the same way we came in and come back again and keep going and coming with our small boat or whatever and hopefully encourage more people to come with us. Let's get bigger organizations that have more resources than we do. Let's get governments to also defy Israel's illegal policy and come. And when we manage to do this, to go back and forth, then we will have opened a sea route and we will have effectively broken the siege then. And so that's what we promised the people of Gaza that we were going to do. This is not going to be a one-time thing. And so five days later we left Gaza and we took out also Palestinians with us. Palestinians are trapped in Gaza. Hundreds of students that have scholarships to study abroad or placements in foreign universities and can't get permission from the Israeli military to leave. Hundreds of patients that can't get the medical treatment they need in Gaza and can't get permission to leave. And just to give an example, really Israel's kind of excuse is this is not, this is not uh, life-threatening or this is, uh, and the Israeli, um, what is it called, the Physicians for Human Rights in Israel recently made this distinction and that Israel is making an illegal distinction between life-saving medical attention and quality of life medical care. So you should be able to get medical care to improve your quality of life. But if it's not absolutely necessary, life-saving, then Israel does not give you the permission to go elsewhere in order to seek this medical attention. For example, recently a 62-year-old woman that needed spinal cord injury, a uh, spinal cord operation that she couldn't get in Gaza was denied permission to leave and the reason was she can't prove that this is, um, you know, that this is necessary for her survival. And so she doesn't need to leave to get this. And so we managed to take a small number, but the people that we can fit on our boats out of Gaza. A family that had been cut off from their father abroad, they had come visit in Gaza and they weren't allowed to leave. And a young 16 year old boy who had lost his leg in an Israeli military operation and was not allowed to either seek medical treatment in, in Israel or to go elsewhere. So him and his father we also took out on our boats. Uh, and we took them out without asking permission from the Israeli military. And that was the first time, it was the first time the Palestinians were allowed to leave their country, their homeland, without permission from the Israeli military. And we managed to do this a few times. We left and we organized ourselves and we came back. For a total of five times that we made this trip from Cyprus to Gaza from August 2008 through December 2008. And we took in parliamentarians and journalists and doctors and professors and people that could not get to Gaza any other way to see what was happening and, and also to take Palestinians out. We didn't take humanitarian aid with us because one, our, our boats were too small to really carry uh, anything, just symbolic stuff really. And two, because the main, our main goal was not to, to deliver humanitarian aid and to perpetuate this aid cycle, the cycle of aid dependency. It was to confront the policies that need Palestinians, <coughs> that leave Palestinians in need of this aid. Um, five times we made the mission. Our sixth voyage was uh, on December 29, 2008, two days after Israel had started bombing Gaza in what they called Operation Cast Lead, an operation that, uh, that went on for 18 days and actually, sorry, no, 22 days, and saw the killing of over 1,400 Palestinians and the injury of over 5,000 more, mainly civilians, non-fighters, non-combatants, the destruction of thousands of homes and businesses and schools uh, and places of worship. Two days after Israel started that bombing campaign, we tried to take an emergency boat to Gaza. We did fill this with as much aid, medical aid, that we could and we had uh, four surgeons that were going to go with us to try to help the Palestinian doctors in Gaza. And uh, journalists that were not being allowed into Gaza to cover what was happening from the inside. In the middle of the night, in international waters, about 90 miles still out from Gaza, an Israeli warship rammed our small boats three times. They tried to say that it was, we collided into them. We didn't collide with them. They purposely rammed our boat and left it to sink. 
Luckily, it didn't sink. Our captain was, was very skilled, was able to get it back to a port in Lebanon. He couldn't even take it all the way back to Cyprus. But everyone was okay. And we decided and we announced that Israel, if they think they're going to stop us with this violence, they're not. We're going to go again. And we tried to, and we did work to get another boat, and we tried to go again about two weeks later. That ship was almost capsized, didn't make it to Gaza. Everyone was okay, though. And then a few months later, we went again. <coughs> um, that boat was called the Spirit of Humanity. It was surrounded by Israeli commandos, naval forces. They overtook our boat, they commandeered our boat, arrested everybody, threw everybody in jail that ended up deporting them. Uh, so that didn't make it to Gaza either. So now we're in a situation in the summer of 2009 that we had three attempts to get to Gaza that were violently intercepted by the Israeli forces, the Israeli military. So what were we going to do? We announced that we're not going to stop for two reasons. One, because the level of violence that was used against us is much less than what's used against Palestinians on a daily basis. And so we can't, we can't back down to this kind of to this violence. We have to try to, to mobilize to defeat the kind of violence that is going to keep going and keep uh, being used if we don't do something about it. And two, because we can't give in to this notion that military might is stronger than the rights that we are fighting for. But we realize that we can't just send one boat, a small boat again. So instead of sending one small boat, we said, we're going to send a flotilla. Yes. And that's what we started. Organizing 